The movie opens up by a woman named Amberly Snyder. She is a woman whose hobby is riding horses in barrel race rodeo. She often won regional level championships and her ambition at that time was to enter the professional racing event. She was always supported by her mother, Tina. Amberly and her family had their own farm in Elkridge, Utah which made it easier for her to train with her horse every day. She was trained by her mother to get better and faster record time, Amberly likes to ride the horses like her mother, while her younger brother, JC, likes to play baseball like her father. One day, Tina planned to travel for work out of town. She had to work because she needed money to get a rider's license so he can enter the professional championship. Tina offered to take her to her destination but she refused because she said that she had already gotten used to driving her truck. At the same time her father Corey also called her. At that time, Corey was in Hawaii to coach the baseball team there. Corey told her to be careful on the road and also informed her that he would be home in a month. Before hanging up the phone, Corey reminded Amberly that their life motto. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Flashback to the past, it was Corey who gave Amberly a horse as a Christmas gift. It was a very strong horse so Amberly named it Power. Amberly immediately had ambitions to win the championship with her new horse because she was very good at riding it. Stacy, her mother's friend was willing to train her to take part in the barrel race. Back to the present, by driving her truck, Amberly started her journey. Initially, the journey was smooth until finally, when the truck's GPS signal was lost, Amberly tried to reach the map in the next seat. Unfortunately, she lost control of her truck because one of the wheels went out of the road, forcing her to swerve the steer. The accident was inevitable. Amberly had a serious accident in the middle of nowhere. She couldn't move her body while her hands supported her body. She waited for people to pass by until finally, a husband and wife passed by and immediately called 911. The guy told Amberly not to move because her leg was badly pierced by the spike fence. A moment later, a policeman came and informed Amberly that her head was seriously injured. At that time, Amberly immediately called her father who was in Hawaii. Corey was shocked to hear about the accident. Amberly told her father to call her mother at home to inform her about the incident. The paramedics arrived not long after and tried to explain Amberly's situation to Corey by phone. They also informed that Amberly would be taken to the nearest hospital. The officers tried to stabilize Amberly's body and tried to lie her down. But just moving her body a little made her scream loudly. It turned out that her body was very serious. Corey immediately called home. He told Tina that their daughter had an accident and was taken to the hospital. In a panic, Tina went straight to the hospital. Luckily, JC was there to calm his mother down. Amberly was taken to the Carbon County Memorial Hospital. She was diagnosed with a spinal injury and was immediately treated in the operating room. Amberly has never been to the hospital before, making this her first and the most terrible experience of her life. Because the hospital didn't have proper facilities to treat her, Amberly had to be moved to the hospital in Casper and would be taken by helicopter. Accompanied by Stacy, Tina went straight to Casper to follow Amberly. On the trip, they passed by the crime scene where the accident happened. Tina was on her knees when she saw the condition of her daughter's truck, which was out of shape. Shortly after, Tina arrived at the hospital. It turned out that Amberly had just finished her surgery. The doctor said that he was forced to open Amberly's spine and put two titanium pens to stabilize her body. Since her spinal cord was injured, her nerves were also affected. Amberly had permanent paralysis and would be bound to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Upon waking up, Amberly asked about the condition of her leg. Tina had to say that Amberly will be paralyzed for the rest of her life. Corey arrived from Hawaii to help Amberly through her hard time. Corey and Tina then had to think about their finances because Amberly had to be transferred to a rehabilitation center in Provo, Utah by plane which would cost them $20,000. But fortunately, because Amberly's accident went viral, the players in the baseball league donated to the cost of Amberly's treatment. Being rehabilitated at the therapy center in Provo, a nurse named Felice encouraged Amberly to make her feel comfortable. She also told Amberly to start liking the wheelchair since that would be the only way she could move. The therapy session started. This therapy aimed to strengthen Amberly's hand muscles. Guided by Diego, Amberly was taught to stand up. Initially, the therapy session was enthusiastic and focused, but since it was her first time, the therapy reminded her of the fact that she was indeed paralyzed. Spending her time in a therapy center made her a little emotional. Moreover, she became pessimistic about her condition. That afternoon, her family visited to encourage her. Because of her strong desire, Amberly tried to practice alone at night. She was so determined that she could stand on her own. But when the practice session with her wheelchair started, 
she got stressed again because she couldn't keep her balance. Diego said that with practice then all the processes will be passed gradually. Amberly couldn't help but get angry with herself. Tina went into her room and scolded her a little because she tried to cancel the therapy. Tina told her to stop feeling sorry for herself and told Amberly to go back to the therapy room. It's not. Now get in. You're going to therapy. See you there. During the therapy session, Corey came to help. Along with Diego, Corey planned to spice the practice by using the horse saddle he brought so then Amberly could practice her balance on it. Amberly became excited about the therapy and with her determination, she was able to sit on the horse saddle. One day, Amberly met Tuck Morgan, a bull rider who was paralyzed due to an accident being thrown by a bull and didn't want to go to therapy. Amberly tried to talk to him because they were bound to the same fate. Amberly said that their lives were like it's been ruined but undergoing therapy was something worth trying. Amberly also said that she believed that she would be back on horseback riding someday. Long story short, Amberly had finished her therapy. Felice expressed her farewell to Amberly. Diego also gave some advice to her. Now you go on home and get your glory. Listen, up there, no matter what life gives you, give more back. Bye, Amberly. At night, Amberly arrived at her house. Inside her room, she could see power from the window. The next morning, Amberly tried to use her wheelchair outside. She wanted to see her horse. After a long time, her sister's horse greeted her but Power didn't even want to meet her. Feeling sad, she chose to leave but her wheel got stuck. She tried her best to get away but instead, she fell from her wheelchair. Inside her room, her mother tried to encourage her. Amberly said she wanted to ride again and asked for support from her mother. One day, Amberly rode a horse for the first time after her accident. She didn't feel right about it, saying it felt different from the first time she tried. She told Tina to put her down. Inside the house, she decided that she might not ride again. Emmy, her friend also tried to encourage her. She said that Amberly whom she knew would not give up until she tried her best but Amberly said that no one would understand her current situation. Amberly kept getting emails from a guy named Tate Watkins since her first day hospitalized. He wanted her to be a speaker at the conference that he wanted to hold. Amberly refused to attend it at first, but because Tate kept sending emails to her, she finally decided to call him. At first, Amberly told Tate not to contact him anymore but Tate instead told her that he was also a rodeo athlete. That made her want to talk to him. For the first time, she was able to vent her problems and found people who understood her condition. One day, Amberly was amused because Corey modified her truck with a hand control so that she could drive again. Stacy also helped her to modify her horse saddle with a seatbelt to keep her balance on it. She tried her new saddle straight with power. She tried hard to put on the saddle and finally succeeded. Amberly, along with Tina, rid the horse slowly since Power had to adapt to being ridden without any foot sign from Amberly. On that occasion, Tina offered Amberly to stop competing in the rodeo and instead started teaching the children with Stacy. Hearing that made Amberly mad because her mother didn't even believe in her dream and treated her like a disabled person who couldn't do anything on her own. Tina apologized because of what she told earlier but Amberly was fed up with that. She told Tina to just sell the horse because there was no hope for her to do the rodeo again. Hey, don't you say that, don't you dare say that. But we just, we're just gonna have to find a new way to live. This chair will either be your wings or it will be your anchor. You decide. Amberly then contacted Tate and said that she wanted to attend the conference and became the speaker. She then met Tate in Beaumont High School, Montana, where the conference was held. During the conference, Amberly told the audience about her condition and her new dream. She never thought that being a speaker in front of everyone could revive her purpose in life. Two weeks later, Amberly attended college in South Utah. One day, Amberly got a call from the American Morning, a show that wanted to make a profile about Amberly. They thought that Amberly's plan to ride again will greatly inspire people. Amberly finally got interviewed on Saturday morning. During the interview, she said that no one could choose what will happen in life but the choice to get up and not give up lies inside the heart. She succeeded to inspire during her interview. Then the TV wanted to take Amberly's footage riding a horse, Amberly was very nervous because she had not been riding the horse for two months. The plan was that she would just walk leisurely with power but suddenly, power accelerated and surprised Tina, who saw her riding outside of the arena.
that incident made the momentum for Amberly to return to do the rodeo again. Long story short, Amberly returned to the competition and started in the Spanish Fork Fiesta Days Rodeo as a training ground for her comeback. All the family members watched her, including Tate. During the event, a woman in the back shouted at Tina, saying that she had no heart for letting her disabled daughter ride again. Tina was angry and told the woman to see Amberly's performance to prove that she was wrong. Amberly, during her comeback performance, finished in second place. Great performance for a comeback. Welcome to Never. Second place, now first loser. No way. On another occasion, during practice, Stacy gave the good news to Amberly. She was invited to a rodeo competition, the American Rodeo, and participated as a fan favorite. Turned out, many people followed Amberly's story and wanted Amberly to take part in that rodeo. Before participating in the American Rodeo, Amberly also participated in many rodeos and performed well in all of them. She even ranked first a couple of times. She had proven herself that she deserved to appear in big competitions. One day, when she was preparing for her next rodeo, Emmy who was there to help her, realized that there was something in Amberly's pants. It turned out that Amberly had been hiding her wound which was already quite severe because of the rodeo she attended. One day after the training session, Amberly was seen very pale and suddenly fainted. She was immediately taken to the hospital. The doctor said that there was a wound the size of a baseball that reached her spine and caused an infection. If it was left for two more days, Amberly could even die of it. Since the wound would need intensive care and long-term antibiotics, the doctor forbade Amberly to ride a horse again, which she didn't accept at all. Tina told her that she couldn't stand seeing her daughter bear the pain like that. Amberly had her own reason to hide her condition. She didn't want to stop participating in rodeo after what happened to her and all her hard work to get back to it. Luckily Tina could understand that. Six weeks later, after undergoing the treatment, Amberly was spending time reading letters from her fans. It turned out that many people claimed to be inspired by Amberly's actions. She was touched when a 10-year-old child who also used a wheelchair was able to regain the motivation to carry on with her life. The letters made her regain her spirit. Every morning, she wakes up full of enthusiasm. She trained her physique and rid with power. Not long after, she got a notification. It turned out that she was still able to attend the competition in the American Rodeo. Tina will bring power by car to Texas while Amberly would go there by plane. However, due to bad weather, Tina had to spend a night on her trip so Amberly didn't have a chance to practice. There was only one day left after Tina and Power arrived in Texas. Amberly was worried that she wouldn't be able to perform optimally. In this event, Tina also encouraged Amberly and said that she had seen Amberly's talent in horse riding from a young age and after the accident and therapy she had experienced, she had made rapid progress. Long story short, the American rodeo finally began. Amberly can't back down anymore and had to give her best performance. Tina reminded Amberly that the rodeo was not about winning but about riding power and giving her best performance. You may have lost the use of your legs, but it's opened up your heart. Are you ready? Now remember, it's not about winning, it's about the fact that you are here. Ride like the wind, baby. Leave them all standing. When the time started, Amberly and Power run around the barrel. On average, Amberly would get 17 seconds to finish the race, but that night, she rid as fast as the wind. She broke her own record with 15 seconds and put her up on the board with some of the best rodeos. And if that's the only decision I get to make, I better make it a good one. Who knows what you can achieve? When the doctors asked what my goals were, I said, walk, ride, rodeo. 